I'm interested vaguely in the thick thin argument, and I've read Charles Johnson's piece from 2008, which apparently I'm like one of 40 people who have ever read because it doesn't have many Facebook shares. Like, what the hell? But anyway, it's a it's actually a very interesting piece. Some of it, like a third of it, makes me crazy. Two thirds that I think, well, that's very interesting. But I've not really entered into this thick thin uh, debate really. Um, I, in fact, I find it like too convoluted even to get into. Uh, actually, I mean, it's very important when you use words that people know what the heck you're talking about. Actually, so when I I wrote this brutalism humanitarian thing as a as a different kind of approach. I mean, it, it's it's dealing with a a kind of issue that prevails within the libertarian world. We all believe in the non-aggression axiom, and no other content to that. Like anything that's non-aggressive. Um, is is permitted, and we don't, you know, try to script how that looks in the social order, and that's the beauty and wonder of the libertarian perspective. Um, and yet, um, I had began to look into this architectural school called brutalism uh, that was like radically fundamentalist in the sense that it like it it came up with an ethical and aesthetic opposition to any kind of elaborations on pure function of a building. And I think that the the um, non-aggression principle, um, you know, its its merit is that it has no other content beyond that. On the other hand, it it enables, for example, a person to like have malicious views towards his fellows, to desire to cast people down, to call on uh, very wicked uh, things to happen to others, to like tr be filled with, with hatred, and still not violate the NIP, right? So, so my purpose in writing this article was to say, you know, the spirit of liberty as it has emerged over the last thousand years um, is not really about any of those things that nonetheless were permitted, but really is about a kind of a growing social awareness of the dignity of every individual person. It's about individualism. It's not about tribalism. It's certainly not about hate. It's about love and trade and association and prosperity and the flourishing of humanity. I mean, that's what I was calling humanitarianism. And to me, these are the themes that make liberty really beautiful. And I don't think as libertarians we should be shy at all about talking about those kinds of things, you know? Uh, yeah. We don't have to be neutral with regard to like what kind of society we want to live in. Actually, I mean, is it a society of malice and hate, and and casting people down, or is it a society of of lifting up, of of spreading prosperity and and spreading human dignity? So that's that's what the article was about. I wasn't attempting to say you're a libertarian, you're not. You know, I mean, the article was against libertarian brutalism. I'm I'm acknowledging the libertarianism of the brutalist uh, idea. You know, what what's funny to me, I know we're out of time, but uh, What's funny to me is that you know, in writing that article, it was a, it was a thought process for me, uh, very much of a, uh, a kind of a study of a of an application of an architectural analogy. I gave the really cool name to the people that I was discouraging, <laughs> and I gave the sort of slightly name lame wimpy name to the people I was I was praising. So it's it was a joy for me to see you know, like this thing just stick you know and take hold and 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 for this sort of flourishing okay. you know, to see the debate take place.